Uh, I thought it would be worthwhile to probably add a little bit about uh, the DCR ostium. Now, with the, ad with the you know, extensive use of endoscopes, what is added is that, uh, you know, you would possibly like, as a, as a surgeon, you would possibly like to know what exactly is going out, going around at the time, at the place where everything is happening. How does the ostium heal? Is there a difference in different techniques? Is there something that we can learn? And that could possibly help us uh, understand, also improve upon outcomes in several of the techniques that we do. And that was precisely the objective of uh, doing this. And uh, we know about differences in the various outcomes of techniques. But what exactly? There's a lot of, there, there is information in the literature on, uh, on DCR ostiums. Uh, but there are lacunae in the sense like when we talk about something like a specific technique, like a non-endoscopic endonasal DCR that we're doing, we really don't know what are the differences between the DCR ostiums in external versus non. For that matter, even endonasal. There are surgeries, but uh, when you start comparing between techniques, there is a dirt in literature. Uh, we, uh, we, we, our objective in this was to actually uh, look at our patients who come and their, in their serial visits after surgery. And I think over a period of a year or so, we've, we've, we've actually learned, uh, we've gone a uh, trend that uh, in direction has helped us understand but it's, uh, it's really uh, a fascinating journey, I would say. But a lot needs to be learned on uh, how, what exactly is happening. Why are some uh, uh, ostiums different with the same technique uh, done and a lot of times with the same surgeon? So that's a non-endoscopic. Any DCR would, be, would mean any, uh, a non-endoscopic endonasal DCR at two weeks. And that's what is happening. You'd expect the healing to kind of continue and this becoming a cleaner. But then you see some changes happening at four weeks. I just run through a few pictures. Now you have granulomas coming in. It's only with an endoscope. This is a 30 degree endoscope. You go further in and you see actually the ostium is, is nicely formed with the probe, nice, the lacrimal probe coming in and an absolutely asymptomatic patient. So you have, you can have granulomas there, but you don't have to be concerned about all granulomas. Like this one here looks massive here, but you, again, you go in and you see a nice ostium underneath. So these are not the threatening granulomas which you would be concerned about. So a lot to be learned there. But you can have, again, a non-threatening granuloma here. But this one is almost completely covering the ostium. And if you see this and your patient is, again, symptomatic, you would probably want to do something about it. Again, another granuloma almost, and the patient is symptomatic, removed. And what we did here is, at the same sitting, in the office sitting, you can do a sarcomosteal uh, mitomycin C and uh, maybe follow these patients up on a more frequent intervals and see if it's helping them. These approaches, the way they help are, you can actually sometimes predict who are the ones who could possibly not do well or fail, or imminent failures, and that's how it helps you to intervene and, and not necessarily do another procedure for that. External DCR, I personally feel now, after some time looking at these options, that probably the healing is, uh, comes in uh, earlier, and the way they heal the external DCRs compared to the endonasal DCRs, but that could also be because of the foreign body there. You've got a poor tube in all endonasal procedures, at least. That's another, another thing of adjuvants in endonasal, uh, tube versus no tube. But as far as the literature goes now, the evidence seems to favor using a tube in endonasal procedures. Uh, external DCR again, two weeks, that's how it looks. And at three weeks, this is how the non-endoscopic endonasal DCR. Quite a bit of, uh, you know, you, you, as you see them, you personally realize that a lot of times once you take out the tube, the healing sets in and things happen. That's a, probably the kind of ideal ostium you would look at. Common internal punctum, nicely spaced. That's the posterior wall, anterior wall, superiorly well. So that's the almost the. So that's what exactly happens after a, about a month, actually. This is a four months. About a month, you see a nice saucer opening, saucerization of the lacrimal sac, and easy communication of the lacrimal probe inside tells you that it's all going well. Another two ostiums uh, showing the same. This is the kind of thing where you have a wall kind of threatening the, the, the ostium, the internal opening, and uh, you would want to watch out for this, and sometimes it comes completely careless. But again, here you would probably rely more on functional tests to look at whether these people would eventually, but it's a difficult call. Sometimes you can make out, sometimes you can't. Another ostium, two weeks it looks like this, and in six weeks it's kind of become, you need to intervene here, take out this, give a little circumosteal, 
MNC and uh, watch them closely. Uh, we thought, well, it would also help to know, compare the uh, external versus, let's say, non-endoscopic endonasal. And the technique we used was image J software. You had you have to have a, have a definite, absolute uh, measurement there. A lacrimal probe measured at two millimeters, and that, once with the help of image J, if that is two millimeters, as shows here, you can actually pretty much find out center, what is the largest dimension, and what is perpendicular to that. So that dimension and that dimension comes out. You can also draw out. You have to uh, actually, uh, uh, you know put this with the help of somebody does this because the contour, but once that's done, the area is made out. And uh, again, what, are the, what is the distance from the internal punctum to the walls, the superior, the posterior, the anterior, and the inferior walls? Based on that, an analysis and the number of patients that we did, well, it actually looks that they are very similar. And this is all after one month, external versus non-endoscopic endonasal DCR. Again, an ongoing study with the numbers increase, is there a difference? But the way it is at the moment, about 90 patients, it looks like 45 in each arm, looks like they're very similar as far as the maximum length. They're also in the perpendicular distance to the maximum length. None of them is, uh, is the significant difference. The area again, and so is the position of the common punctum to the nearest wall. So a lot can be learned from the osteo in, an, in, in, in a DCR. A lot of imminent failures, you could probably intervene follow them closely and avoid another surgery. And uh, well, there's a, there a lot that can be done with image processing softwares, uh, which can be used to measure and learn from them. Probably like take this opportunity to uh, invite uh, you all to the OPI meeting in Bhuvaneshwar later this year from 4th to 6th uh, December. <laughs>